Mr. Hall, are we ready to get started? All right, why don't we get started? <clears throat> Uh, welcome all. My name is Derek Hall. I am the Director of Community Development and Regulatory Affairs here for uh, the City of South Fulton. And today's meeting is the Community Zoning Information Meeting. This is a meeting that is put on by the City of South Fulton to introduce new projects that have been submitted to the city so that the public can meet, formally meet uh, the applicant, and so that the public can learn about new applications that have been submitted to the city. It's important to note <clears throat> that um, for this particular meeting, staff has not concluded its staff report, uh, nor has staff prepared the analysis of the development project, but early in the planning process, we like to make sure that individuals uh, in the community, particularly those who may be impacted by the particular project, will have an opportunity to understand in totality the proposed project. So again, we're going to provide you with a very high level review of the project. Our review, our presentation does not include the typical staff analysis and recommendations. So there will be no actions that will be taken as a result of this zoning information meeting tonight. Um, and we are going to allow individuals from the public uh, after staff makes a presentation and af after the applicant provides additional comments, we will allow the public to ask questions related to the project. We would ask that you keep in mind professional decorum when responding or asking questions, uh, please raise your hand, use the raise hand feature and or type in that you have a question and one staff member from Community Development and Regulatory Affairs will identify you and you will be unmuted. And at that time, you can ask your question of either staff or of the applicant. So with that said, if there aren't any other questions, I'll turn it over to Marissa Jackson, who is our senior planner, and she will provide an overview of the first planning case. Okay, thank you for that introduction. So for everyone um, online, our meeting is being streamed live to YouTube as always. But um, today we are also trying a different model where we allow the public to join the meeting. So here is the meeting link on the screen. If you go to the city website on the calendar, there is also a hyperlink that you can click on. Um, as Mr. Hull mentioned earlier, please be respectful. Please remain muted until you are called on to speak. And please keep your questions and comment relevant to the topics of tonight's meeting. Um, and we'll get started. So our first case is Z22007. It's a request for rezoning on Wallace Road. And the applicant seeks a rezoning from AG1, which is the Agricultural Zoning District to CUP, which is Community Unit Plan. Um, and basically Community Unit Plan is a zoning district for planned residential developments. Their plan includes duplexes for seniors. There are 22 duplexes and 10 single family homes. And the future land use here is suburban neighborhood. It's in compliance with the future land use plan. Go to the next slide. And so this is just to um, an aerial view to let us know where it is. So here's Campbellton Road and here's Wallace Road. And then I believe this is Sandtown Middle School here and then at the intersection off the screen here is Camp Creek Parkway. 
And then here are just some zoning maps. This is a future land use map. So you can see the intersection here is community live work, which would be used for um, like mixed use developments. But here the future land use is suburban neighborhood. And then you can see the current zoning at the site is AG1. There is some AG1 across the street and nearby, but then there's also R3 that is surrounded by. This is kind of their site plan. They have an entrance here on Wallace Road. They have senior duplexes. They have senior duplexes, and then they have some single family homes also. This is a draft site plan. Um, it's still in the process of being updated. And that's kind of an overview. That's kind of an overview of our first case. And our applicant is here also, Miss. Um, Dorothy Crowley and Michael, if you guys have any comments you wanted to add. Ms. Crowley, you're muted, I believe. Okay, now I'm in. Uh, good evening, uh, Sandtown community and Fulton County. Uh, I appreciate you guys taking the time to review our application. We're really excited about um, what we'd like to do in the community. My family and, and I are stakeholders in the community. We live in, well, we live in Atlanta in the Camp Creek area. Uh, not quite in South Fulton, but we're right at the cusp of it. And so we desire to move, live in South Fulton. So we are building our forever homes uh, in that, and in this uh, Wallace Road uh, community as well. So those those properties that you see in the very back, those two properties, that's where um, we will be building uh, our home. So there are 11 uh, duplex and eight single family homes across the Wallace Road exit, I mean, uh, entrance area. So we're just excited to allow our community, the uh, duplex will house 55 and wiser is, is, our, is our goal to allow community members that live in the community and that no longer want the responsibilities of a home to be able to stay in their communities and move across the street to the 55 and wiser community where we have we will have amenities and different things to offer them and they can stay in their communities and even allow their you know if they have children and grandchildren to move into the homes that they have there and they'll still have access to them without having to move across town to get uh, luxury accommodations um, and move away from their family and community that they love so we're hoping that this rezoning will allow us to bring this into the community of South Fulton. Great, thank you, Ms. Ms. Crowley. Um, Alicia or Nadia, do you know if there are any questions for the applicant or staff? Yes, looks like Gloria Dixon has a question regarding this project. Ms. Dixon, I am going to unmute you. Thank you. Will the duplexes, are they rental properties, rental duplexes, or will they be homeowners? Homeowners. Okay, homeowners. Yes. And what type of amenities will you have in the development? In that development, I'm, uh, it's Natasha. Natasha um, Ewan, are you on? She's our agent that has all the details of the different amenities. And she, because she's going to speak to that. Hi there. Um, so we are um, proposing that these are high end duplex uh, 55 and wiser. Um, so when you say amenities, are you looking for a community amenities specifically, like within the community? Because we will have some green space, a community garden, a gazebo. So there's not a lot of um, internal amenities. Most of the land space will be used to build a, uh, housing. But those housings will be high end with high end finishes and um, high end options available to uh, those uh, interested in them. 
with this, we will, with we this will be adding a, a walking trail and some seating around in that um, pond yeah. area, correct? Yes, there'll be walking trails as well as seating available. A, a couple of questions. Will there be um, one level or two levels in the townhome? They will be um, single level primarily with the option to have a loft in the um, in the uh, duplexes. So the okay. loft is an option, yeah. So there may be a third bedroom or family or media center available in the duplexes. Now I'm looking at the map. Mm -hmm. And I see one, two, three, four areas. So could you explain the four areas? I see the where the houses will go in the back, but I see one, two, three areas on the map. Oh, well, the main on on Wallace Road itself, those are single family uh, uh, homes. There are two story homes uh, that will be available to anyone. And then once you go, if you turn into the subdivision, you'll see the duplexes dual units, those units are for 55 and wiser. So it's basically three uh, three phases uh, essentially of this. So you've got the 55 and wiser, which are, it's internal to the community and facing on Wallace Road itself, you'll have single family uh, two-story homes available. Okay, so I was, may I suggest to Zoni that maybe we could put some speed bumps, uh, uh, on Wallace Road because people really drive very fast on that road. And if we're going to have... So all the, oh, now all the entrances for the single family homes are going to be internal to the community. So if you notice, there is a single entrance point as individuals turn into there. So that li it literally the, um, the garages and everything will be facing internal to the community. No, I meant traffic. I'm, oh, I'm just oh, asking zoning could consider putting speed bumps on Wattis Road to slow down the traffic because people really drive fast on Wattis Road. Ma'am, this is uh, Derek Hall, the director of the department. Um, we will take note of your comments um, and forward them as a part uh, once we start the review with the other departments. Thank you, sir. Sure. I'm done. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions regarding this project before Marissa moves on to the next project. If so, please raise your hand. Use the raise hand feature. Okay, hearing none, we will move on to project number two. Sorry, I was muted that whole time. So I'll go backwards. Okay, so this request is on Old Fairburn Road. It's another zoning request that will help to accommodate our senior population. So the applicant is requesting a rezoning from C2, which is general commercial OI which is office institutional and CUP, which is again, our plan development. And they want to rezone to SH, which means senior housing to construct 124 senior, uh, a, a, a senior living facility that is 124 units. Um, it's going to be for seniors that are 55 years and older. The future land use for this site is community live work. And the request is in compliance with the future land use plan. They're also, they're also asking for two concurrent variances. Per our zoning ordinance, the current um, senior housing zoning district allows required residents to be 62 years or older to live there. So they'll have to request a concurrent variance to reduce the age from 62 to 55. And then they're also requesting a variance to reduce the parking from 1.4 spaces per unit to 1.25 spaces per unit. They found that in some of their other developments, they tend to be over, over parked. And so that's why they're requesting that. This is where we are. This is 
Piedmont driving range, but like immediately behind it. This is Camp Creek Parkway. And so before you get to um, Enon Road, like this is Butner Road down here and this is Enon Road up here, you make a right onto Fairburn Road and it's gonna be this parcel here that's highlighted. So as you can see along Fairburn Road, the teacher land use is community live work. And then this parcel was kind of like a carryover parcel from the driving range many years ago. And so it, it looks like it has a few different zonings on it. So that's where it's going to go. And I had a site plan for that one. I can bring up the site plan later. Basically, it's one single unit. There is a there's two entrances and it's one single building that's going to have 124 units. It has a stream and they're planning to stay out of the stream buffer. And they're also planning to include um, maybe some walking trails. And that's it for this presentation. Great, thank you, Marissa. We will now take questions from the public regarding this particular project. If you have any questions, please use the raise hand function on Zoom. <clears throat> Okay, right now I see Miss Linda Allen. So Miss Linda Allen, I am going to unmute you so you can ask your question. Um, before we do, Marissa is the applicant present for any additional comments before we go into public comments. I do not see the applicant at this time. Is the applicant for this particular application on the Zoom call? I do not see the applicant. Okay. Hi, good evening. Um, I have a question. Where can we see the site plan? You said you didn't have it available right now? It's actually on our website. I think I forgot to put in the presentation, but it's actually on our website. I, um, or I'm not sure if it's been all the way updated yet, but it will be on our website. The zoning case is Z22008, and it will be uploaded on our website if you go to current um, zoning cases. Okay. Also, um, I, I, I'm not, I don't really care for the idea that it's 55 and up or 55, lowering the age limit. I think um, the need in our neighborhood and our community is for senior living. Um, uh, at our Sandtown community meetings, a lot of members express that they have to go outside of this community to find senior housing. And they would rather stay in their community. And they don't want to, they, they want to, they don't want to be in their big homes with a lot of land and their children are not coming back to live in these houses. So I would like to see at least one of your communities with 62 and up to remain because we are short of senior housing here. And that's with that property on, on the previous property. I couldn't find my mute button or my raised hand right away. But um, I wanted to know, how are you going to address the traffic coming onto and out of Wallace Road onto Campbellton Road? Right now, that is just a bottleneck. Um, they've lessened the lane on that road right by Reynolds. It's impossible to get out of. It's impossible to get into. They drive fast. So by increasing the amount of housing in that little area, how are you going to address the traffic coming onto Campbellton Road? Marissa, I can answer that question. So uh, as a part of our development review process, this particular project will be forwarded to the department that's gonna review it. And if a traffic analysis is required, then a traffic analysis will need to be submitted as a part of the review of the process of the project. 
And then as a result of that, if there are any conditions that come out of that traffic analysis, they will be included and, um, as a part of the overall conditions for the project. It's not automatically included? It, there has to be, as I, you may not have heard uh, the beginning when we had started, we have not started on the analysis of the project yet. So the purpose of this meeting today is to simply present cases that have been submitted to the public so that they are aware. And as we continue this process, we will be doing all of the various analysis needed to make recommendations either in support, um, either to deny or either to continue to work with the applicant on the project. We are not that far down the process yet. Okay. Um I would suggest also that you schedule a meeting with Deborah, um, our president of Sandtown Community Association, uh, so we can discuss this further in more detail. Because uh, there's there's one of our members that lives off Wallace Road, and she's she's going to be against this property, against this development, and. Um, I don't see her on here. So I would like our community association to get involved in the conversation as well. I don't see any of us on here, but me. I will tell you that as a part of our process, the applicant is required to conduct a community meeting outside of this particular meeting. So um, if you are within a certain radius of the project and it sounds like you are, then yes. each individual, each uh, impacted property owner will receive a notice to attend the, the meeting. That well, this meeting is the NPA. This is the Sandtown Community Association. I understand. Yeah. And any other I, questions? I can send you our email address to the president. Just put it in the chat and we will capture it and make sure that the information gets to the association. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, any other questions related to this particular project? If so, please raise your hand. I was also going to ask, can you guys see the site plan now for the other one on Old Fairburn Road? I'm not sure if the screen worked but I was able to locate the site plan. Marissa, we can see the plan. Okay, got awesome. Okay, I am now going to recognize Marsha and I am going to unmute you. Good evening. I wanted to ask with um, the current one that we were talking about, not the, the previous sand town. Is there adequate parking, not only for the residents, but for visitors? Because you, this is all in one building, correct? Yes, it's one building. So what kind of parking or even uh, drop off is, is uh, included in this? Yeah, great question. So for drop-offs, it, look like, it looks like they have an awning. So you would come in here and then make that left turn. And then it looks like you can drop off people underneath this covered patio right here. And then you could keep driving to the exit. For example, if someone had an Uber or a Lyft picking them up. And then it looks like they have parking in the front of the building. And then on the... Um, east and west side of the building also. And in addition to some handicapped parking spaces along the perimeter. Um, we haven't made a determination on the concurrent parking variance yet, but we will take, you know, all of those things into consideration as we're writing recommendations. Was that all your questions, Ms. Steele? Uh, take it that that's a yes.
Next, we will call on Ms. Juanita Marbury. Good afternoon, Derek. I just wanted to reiterate what Ms. Linda has spoken about, about the contact with the Sandtown Coalition. And I know that you all's concern tonight is uh, uh, project one and two, but we we live here. And so we have an, uh, a better idea as to what's coming into our neighborhood. And because of the traffic that we already anticipate in this area, because you are one of probably five different properties that are coming up in this area that's going to be using that very same street, that very same area between Wallace Road, Stonewall Tail, the public center. We have a lot going on in that little area. And that's why she was concerned about the traffic. So I just want to encourage, and Derek, be patient because you sound like you in a hurry. <laughs> I'm not. I was, I was simply going to say, Ms. Marbury, that um, we are, as a part of our review, particularly with our public works department, we will be making sure that we look at all of the potential impacts related to the existing projects and any of the new, any of the proposed projects. That's all I was going to say. Thank you. Great, great. Ms. Dixon, are you uh, raising your hand for this particular project? Uh, yes, I also, I live on Wallace Road, so the traffic is going to really impact my subdivision, Woodside Hill subdivision. So that's why I was asking about the traffic the speed on Wallace Road and the congestion that's going to, because we're building uh, the zoning committee approved for 234 apart, right behind our subdivision on the corner of Ca uh, Camp Creek and Camerton Road. That's a lot of traffic and also how it will impact the school system because it's, we're building so much in that area. And I'm glad to hear you say that you're gonna study the traffic in the area before anything is approved. Things have already been approved and GDOT, I don't know if they have made a decision about what they need to do to make the traffic flow better in this area. So if you would please consider Woodside Hill Subdivision, Madison Trace, as we do live on Wallace Road and all the traffic it has gonna impact the schools and the traffic on Camelton, Wallace Road, Camp Creek, just that's my concern. Great, thank you. If there are no other comments or questions, we will move on to project number three. Okay. Project number three is at 7500 Hall Road in District 4. The applicant is requesting a rezoning from AG1 to CUP to build 77 single family homes. The future land use is rural neighborhood. The request is in compliance with the future land use plan. This is the location of the site on Hall Road. You can see that it's heavily wooded and undeveloped at this time. And so here you can see that the future land use is rural neighborhood. And then farther away is suburban neighborhood too. And at this intersection is mixed use. Um, as a reference, this is where the Publix is. Right here on Campbellton Fairburn Road. And so we would go north along Campbellton Fairburn Road and then make a left here and then make a left on the hall road to get to the site. This is the site plan. It has, an, it has one entrance here and the applicant is showing a diesel lane. Um, it has two cul-de-sacs and a walking trail. And there is a cell tower on the site also, which is kind of 
integrated into the wooded area. And I believe the applicant, um, Michelle Battle, is here. Do you have anything to add, Ms. Battle? Just one moment, I need to unmute Ms. Battle. <clears throat> You can proceed, Michelle. Good evening, Michelle Battle with Battle Law. Um, you know, Marissa, I think you did a great job with regards to um, the overall review for the project. Um, we have been working already with the community. We've had a couple of meetings um, that resulted in us actually changing even the location of the driveway um, so that it would not be directly across from um, one of the uh, adjacent uh, or nearby property owners. Um, we also took into consideration uh, the cell tower um, that is on the property and redesigned the site from the original site plan uh, in order to um, make sure that the cell tower was out of uh, the way in terms of uh, the residential units and also um, that the fall area um, would not result in any issue um, for um, the, the, the residents. We do have the trail as already indicated um, and we'll continue to work with the community on the amenities. We've also had, uh, I believe, a meeting with the uh, Cedar Grove folks. And again, we'll continue to work um, to tweak the site plan um, in order to address the issues that are raised. We do have um, Wade Stroud, who's our uh, engineer with um, uh, more bass on with us this evening as well, if there's any uh, questions of that nature. And um, we're excited about this product. Um, we believe it'll be selling uh, in the mid threes to fours, um, and that um, it's a perfect location being adjacent to uh, the school. Um, we believe that um, this will be a great uh, location for families. Uh, hopefully kids can actually walk to school um, from this property, uh, as opposed to having to um, take the bus or get in uh, a parent's car in order to get there. And um, that it will be um, a, a definitely a major um, uh, plus for the uh, adjacent school. So um, with that, we're here to ask for, answer any questions that you may have. Yep, if you have any questions regarding this project, please uh, indicate by raising your hand or type in the chat that you have a question and we will recognize you. We have a raised hand by Ms. Allen. Ms. Allen, I will unmute you at this time. Thank you once again. Are these properties gonna be rented or low income or for, pur for purchase? Um, no, these will be for sale homes. They are market rate homes. Um, again, we're looking at price points probably starting um, if, in uh, the, the high, the mid to high threes going into the fours. Um, as the market continues to, to move, you know, we, we certainly would anticipate price points probably moving up, but these are for sale units. This is not intended to be a rental community. And are these gated communities? This is not a gated community. Why not? Um, I don't know that the property owner had any particular reason other than um, one of the challenges that we have with um, gated communities. Um, one is that the internal streets would be the responsibility um, of the HOA um, for that maintenance and upkeep, um, which pushes up um, the annual assessment for the residents. Um, additionally, um, the city of um, Atlanta, who services um, water and sewer, um, also require that there be um, a single meter, um, which has also been uh, kind of challenging when we've been trying to deal with some of the uh, gated communities, um, which means that the HOA would then be responsible for passing out um, and, and dividing up the water and sewer um, fees as opposed to each house being individually metered. So there's a lot of nuances to that that make it very challenging, which pushes the price points up above what we believe um, on this particular piece of property that um, we'd like to see. So 
Um, there had no, there hasn't been any um, discussion about any type of, of gated community here. I would like to see like a comparison and everything. I I think people that are in HOA communities are aware of the fees and and prefer that because it comes with a lot of perks, even though they're paying a little bit more. Yeah. Understood. Um, I see someone in the chat also asked about um, a rental cap. Um, we are, um, um, you know, willing to look at a rental cap if that is requested of us, yes. Are there any other questions regarding this project? If not, we will proceed to the next. Okay, our next case is Z22001 at 6170 Riverside Drive. The applicant is actually rezoning from M2 to CUP to construct 62 single family homes. This request is in compliance with future land use plan. And so the rezoning, if granted, would require a future land use amendment. But again, we are still in the process of drafting um, staff recommendations and having conversations and completing reviews on this one. This is where the site is located. So this is Camp Creek Parkway right here. This is Campbellton Road. And then this is the new Publix that they're building. This is Fulton Industrial Boulevard. And then this is our site drive. And so it's this site right here. And on the zoning map, you can see that the future land use here is industrial, I guess, due to adjacency to Fulton Industrial. And the current zoning is M2, which is industrial. And here's the site plan. There are some um, state waters on the site that the applicant is planning to stay out of. And then here's the site with the 62 single family homes. And again, the applicant, Michelle Battle, is on the call. Do you have anything you want to add, Ms. Battle? Um. I guess the only thing I, what I would say with regards to this, um, the land use designation is indicated as MIX um, and um, the current zoning is not consistent um, with uh, the current uh, land use plan. And um, we are certainly doing less density than what the MIX um, would actually allow. Um, MIX would allow up to 12 units per acre and we are at a density of um, less than four units per acre on this particular piece of property. Um, we do think that it is suitable for the single family detached product um, and believe that um, this would allow um, for other larger projects in the area um, along that corridor that might lend itself um, to more of a mixed use uh, component on the site, this is a fairly small site, all things considered, um, for it to be um, mixed use. But we can certainly uh, contribute to the overall uh, development of this corridor, and um, we believe that that would be suitable, um, particularly when you've got um, the commercial intersection um, further down at um, at Campbellton and Riverside. I think that uh, it, it probably makes more sense to kind of localize that commercial con corridor there. Uh, and to have um, surrounding rooftops to support it as it continues to grow and develop. Um, we have had meetings. Um, we know that we've got some challenges um, that we have to uh, address with Sandtown. Um, we've had um, one meeting uh, already there. Um, we certainly um, will continue to work um, with the community to see if we can um, address the issues that have been raised. Thank you. Great. That's if the end of my comments. Questions, yeah. If you have any questions regarding this project, please uh, indicate by raising your hand or type in your question in the chat and we will read it. So first off is Ms. Dixon. I will unmute you now at this time. The only thing I want to uh, uh, 
to mention again, it's about the traffic. Uh, everything is coming in the same little area. Uh, this is not the only projects that we're talking about tonight that are going to be, that have been developed in our area. So please consider the traffic and the schools um, when, when you're doing this planning. In the, in the one that's on Hall Road, which high school are you talking about is adjacent to this property? Ms. Dixon, can you ask that question again? Which high school? I, I just heard the lady say that uh, the kids will be able to walk to school. I just did not know which school she was referring to. That's the one. Langston Hughes, Langston Hughes High School. Oh, Langston Hughes. Okay. I, I just please consider it's too much going on at this particular in this particular area for and something has to be done about the traffic. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dixon. Um, Ms. Johnson, I will unmute you now. Yes, um, about this particular uh, project, one of the things that I want to say, we are moving too fast to clutter this one particular area. And it we are doing all this um, development at existing sewage areas and I am suggesting, and I've made this suggestion several times to council, and I'm going to continue making this suggestion, that we halt right now and amend our um, zoning and land use plan. Because if we don't do that, we're, we're going to be in massive trouble because we will have built out our uh, sewage capacity before time. And then everything is gonna fall back on the citizens. And another point I wanna bring out that really disturbs me is the fact that every time something comes up in this area, for some reason, people wanna think that uh, Sandtown Community Association has full say so for everything in this area. And that is not true. I am very happy that they are active and that they are interested but you have to consider the entire area, not just one little area. And I am very much against packing all this in on top of us like this. So I say no to the whole thing until we can amend our uh, land use plan and zoning. With the citizens, it needs to be done. Ms. Johnson, I think you cut out a little bit at the end, but I think we did hear your final comment. Yes, I was saying we should say no to this project until we have an opportunity to revisit the area to make sure we're not impacting everybody in this area. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Looks like we have one question in the chat and that question is related to why is there only one exit uh, for the proposed development? Ms. Battle, I just unmuted. Um, we, we are not actually required to have more than one um, point of entry. Um, we will talk with um, fire and safety as to whether or not we need a uh, another remote point of entry um, with regards to um, the community, but with the number of units that we have, um, we believe only one um, point of entry is actually required. And we have a distance requirement. We only have so much frontage. And there's also a distance requirement um, between entrance points. And I don't believe that we actually meet that requirement. Great, thank you. Uh, are there any other questions before we move on to the next project regarding this particular project on Riverside Drive? If not, Marissa, can you go to the next project? Sorry, we're, I'm, I'm unmuting you now. 
Sorry, I keep muting myself and then forgetting that I'm muting and I'm just talking away by myself. Okay, so the applicant is requesting a special use permit for a school. Um, it's going to be a boarding school where some of the students stay there full time overnight. And then some of the students are just going to come for a day and their caretakers are going to drop them off at school in the morning and pick them up when school is over in the evening. The site is currently zoned AG1 and schools, schools or special schools as they're referred to in the zoning ordinance are allowed in AG1 with the per provision of a future, with, with the provision of a special use permit. And so that's kind of what brings us here today. And this is where the site is. This is Stonewall Tail Road here. And so the entrance would be on this road on Camp Drive. And this is where the school would be. Um, you should know this was previously a school and it's been vacant and abandoned for a number of years. And so the applicant is using the existing building and coming in for a renovation. This is the future land use map. Future land use is suburban neighborhood. And then the current zoning is AG1. And the applicant submitted a site plan. You can see it kind of just has the outline of the building here. And it's just a one story brick building. And then the, ent the entrance would be here on Camp Drive. Um, the applicant is on the call and he can give us some additional feedback on the school, the curriculum, and the students that they're going to have there. What's the name of the applicant? I believe the applicant's name is Jason Allen. Mr. Allen, you are unmuted. Thank you. Great evening, evening everyone. Thank you all for having us on uh, this evening. Uh, on behalf of myself and every one part of Global Kingdom Academy. Uh, if it's okay with you all, I have a short three minute video that I would like to show and give a, a quick synopsis of Global Kingdom Academy if I'm allowed to share the screen with everyone. Um, we normally ask that we receive presentations in advance, but I'm able to um, maybe do that. Mr. Hull, is that what you want us to do? What I would ask, sir, since we haven't had a chance to review the presentation, is that, uh, as you know, as a part of your requirement, you are required to hold a, a community meeting with individuals that will be impacted by the proposed development. So if you could share that, uh, the actual video at that time, you're more than welcome to provide us with a narrative of what the video covers. Okay, no problem. Uh, so what we have at Global King Academy, as uh, Ms. Marissa has uh, alluded to, it was an abandoned school that's been abandoned for over 10 years. And we're looking to uh, renovate the school uh, and create a, uh, a faith-based boarding school for young men between the ages of 12 and 18 years of age to create opportunities that will allow them to graduate with a high school diploma, also with a vocational trade. Uh, the boarding aspect of the school would house 56 young men, uh, which will be only high schoolers between the grades of ninth and 12th grade. We will have online schooling, we will have leadership development, we'll have career paths. There will be a huge, agriculture will be a huge component of the academy where young men will learn how to go, see, go from seed to table, seed to consumer. We'll have farmer's markets to be able to sell fruits and vegetables to the community uh, and allow that to help, so, so help sustain the school as well. There'll be spiritual growth, which will be the, the main and key component of the school. Physical uh, development and growth, life skills, uh, teaching these young men the basic life skills that will help them in their everyday lives of being young men, husbands, and also fathers. And also we have Kingdom Fun Arts, utilizing these young men's skills and how to create positive music, how to create uh, arts, how to uh, utilize uh, social media, the proper way, how to utilize um, 
all the different gifts and talents that has been given unto them. And so we're looking to uh, take a lot of these young men out of toxic environments and house them in environments that's going to allow them to flourish in the God-given gift that, that's inside of them. And on the boarding side, there will be two dorm dads along with 24 hour security there to help um, maintain the young men there while they're living there on campus. So that's a quick synopsis of Global King Academy, where there once again be 56 boarders, and then there'll also be about 75 to 100 daytime students. Uh, we also will have all year round activities for the young men and also for the community. Uh, we're looking for the community to be heavily involved in, um, in spending time with the young men and also the young men going out to community uh, and volunteering and helping, whether it be mowing the grass, uh, planting flowers in their yard, maybe uh, going grocery shopping for some of the elderly people and just making sure that making them that be an impact in the community. And so now that the whole community is able to flourish and not just the young men. Great. Thank you, sir. At this time, we would like to take any questions from the public. If you have any questions, please indicate by raising your hand or by typing your question in the chat. I see Miss Linda Allen. I will be unmuting you right now, Miss Allen. Thank you once again. Uh, so are these boys coming from foster care? You said they're coming from... Um, they may, to answer your question, they may be coming from all different walks of life. Some young men may come from uh, a single parent home. They could come from potentially the judicial system. They could potentially come from a family where the mother and father is in the home and they're looking for a different challenge. The uh, traditional educational system is not challenge them because once again, they'll be able to attain a high school diploma and at least one vocational trade. Uh, they have the opportunity to go to college if they choose to. Uh, they have the opportunity to go to the Army, Navy. There will be uh, many opportunities for them to, um, to venture in a afterlife of high school beside just the traditional way of just going to college. And is there a tuition? Yes, ma'am, there's a tuition. How much is that? Uh, the day Mr. student is 12,000 and the, the, the school is all year round. The day student is 12,000. The five day borders is 23,000 and the seven day borders are is 28,000. Okay. Which is very um, last, if you look at the other um, private schools in the area, which is a lot cheaper than those schools there. So we want to make sure it's very affordable and, and that we can definitely make a difference in these young men's lives and, and create an uh, affordable education for them. Do you offer scholarships? Yes, ma'am. Well, we have JL and All Stars, which is a nonprofit that I established while I was playing in the uh, National Football League. And so and it's the mentoring program. So this program here at Global Keen Academy is just expanding the vision that we've already had in place with JLN All-Stars. And so there will be donations given through um, JLN All-Stars that, that will help implement uh, if there's a family that's not able to afford the full tuition. So it'll help to subsidize that whatever that, that family may not be able to afford. And what is the denomination? Non-denomination, faith-based. Non-denomination, non okay. Will they be wearing uniforms? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. Great, are there any other questions related to this particular project? I see one raised hand. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Is that Mr. Booth? Looks like it's Mr. Booth. Dr. Booth. Dr. Booth, you can go ahead on with your question. Yes, yeah, so I'm here. I'm here now. I was waiting for you to unmute me. Thank you. Uh, my, my question was for Mr. Jason Allen. I, I was wondering if he would go ahead and post his link to the Global Kingdom Academy website 
in the chat. And I know that that video is on there because I've seen it before. So if you don't mind, Mr. Allen, would you go ahead and uh, drop that into the chat? Yes, sir, no problem. I had uh, Miss Nita Williams, she's just posted right there in the chat room for anyone can go on the website to see the video. And again, this project will require a the applicant to organize a community meeting. And so at that time, um, certainly there will be an opportunity afforded uh, if the applicant chooses to share in detail the video uh, for this particular project. Are there any other questions? If so, please indicate by raising your hand or type a question in the chat. If not, Marissa, can we proceed to the next uh, application? Yep. So our next request is also a special use permit for a nail salon. Um, it is in compliance with both the current zoning and the future land use plan. Um, it's currently zone C1 and future land use is regional live work. And so it is located here at the very, very edge of the city um, at the intersection of Old National and Jonesboro Road. And then you can see the future land use, community live work, current zoning C1. And basically the applicant recently acquired this facility and they would like to build a nail salon here. There's the entrance with the receptionist area and then there are pedicure booths on the side and then the manicure area is in the center. And then they have some other areas for waiting rooms and um like a break room so the applicant is here um kevin battle i believe is the applicant and also miss Mai is here also the, the other applicant mr battle i will unmute you at this time and miss Mai, i will also unmute you Uh, Mr. Battle, are you indicated by CBAT? I'm assuming, yeah. Mr. Battle, you should be unmuted. Okay, here I am. Oh, I'm sorry. Miss Battle, sorry. Uh -huh, no problem. I'm representing both. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Cheryl Battle. Yes. <laughs> They're a team. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hello. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, my client is looking to, to put a no, new cell, nail salon there where it used to be a bank, a thing, a Bank of America. And um, she'll be doing, it's going it's gonna to be like a spa like type of atmosphere. Um, it's going to be um, glamour nails and spa, and um, should be doing pedicures, manicures, eyebrows, um, lashes, acrylic, and gel nails. And I said not enough nails. Can y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. Yes, we can. Yeah. We can't hear you now. <laughs> there you go. Nope. We can't hear you. Yeah, so there you go. Okay. Yeah, so she's um it's going to be affordable. It's going to be a very um high end atmosphere so we're 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 looking forward to it oh, okay great were there any questions from um the community about this project
Let's see, I don't see any hands raised. All right, if there are no questions and nothing in the chat, we will move on, Miss Allen. You caught me right before I was about to move on. Uh, let me unmute you. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't wanna monopolize it. I did write a question in the chat. Does the owner live in the city of South Fulton? Does she live in the Jonesboro Road area? Miss Battle, you're muted now. Yes, yes, she does. Stays in the Jonesboro area, Jonesboro Road area. She has a residence and she has a Clayton home. County. Yes, ma'am. She's in um, Clayton County, Jonesboro area. Okay. All right. Thank you. If there are no other questions, we will proceed with the next application. So our next application is a request for a variance at 4627 Landmark Drive. Um, the site is currently zoned R3. The ordinance says that in R3, the minimum front yard setback is 50 feet. This house is actually um, partially built and it is over the front yard setback line at 34.9 feet. I would say it's probably about 65 or 70 percent built, like all of the four walls and the roof are on there already. Um, so this is kind of a retroactive um, variance request. And this is where it is. This is Loch Lomond Trail here. And then these are the two lakes. And then here is, I believe, New Hope Road. This, you can kind of see a piece of the road there. They so would turn on Loch Lomond Trail and then go down and make and make a left to get onto Lamp. Okay, so here we are. We would make a left onto Loch Lomond and make a left to go to Lanark. So that's where it is. And then you can see that this is a R3 heavily residential area. Um, these houses are fairly well established. They've been there a long time, some of them were built recently, but a large majority of them have been built over the past many decades ago. And the applicant has a site plan. This is Landark Drive. And then you can see this is the front yard setback line. And the house is already partially built, but it's well over the front yard setback. Um, and again, staff hasn't really written a staff report or recommendation on this one yet, but the applicant is here, Mr. Marvin Arrington. Mr. Arrington, do you have anything to add? Yes. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Uh, thank you to the staff and everyone for being here. Um, the setback, I believe, was due to a miscommunication. Uh, and so we are hoping that um, the setback, the variance will be allowed uh, for the setback so that the house does not have to be torn down. Uh, we did meet with the community uh, and they have, uh, uh, they asked for some concessions and we made uh, all of the concessions that they requested. Uh, and so we're hopeful that, um, this variance will be allowed. Can you give us an overview of the concessions that the community requested? Uh, well, so there was, uh, I think initially there was, uh, once the stop work order, I guess, had gone in, there was initially uh, some trash on the site, so we cleaned that up. There also was uh, fencing or silt fencing uh, that they wanted replaced. I, I believe it had been damaged. And so we replaced that silk fencing. Um, 
And those were the main two things. Uh, there may have been one third thing that I can't recall at the moment, but uh, those were two of the three concessions uh, that we agreed to with uh, the, the neighbors. Okay, thank you. All right, it looks like we have one question from uh, Jewel Johnson. Uh, Jewel, I will unmute you now. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Very, very I'm concerned crazy. about this, and I've been uh, concerned about it for quite some time. Uh, I don't know what community that he met with. I, that house is about 400 feet from my house. I used to mean for you to say you met with the community because I was not informed. And number one, I don't think that we need to do this. Whenever you're getting ready to build, your, your contractor should make sure I say we deny this and they need to just start all over. It need to be torn down and, store, and, and start all over because if we agree to this, this sets the precedent. And next thing you know, Everybody else is doing the same thing. This community was put together in 1959. It's a very old, very scenic community. And we don't want to have it disturbed like that. And I do know the owner of the property. And I have not been included. And I've been here over 35 years. And I say that we do not uh, accept this. I think that they need to tear it down and start all over. And what should have happened, she should have steered her in the right direction. So I say no. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Um, we met with the community back in December over at uh, um, the center there on, on uh, Cascade and, and New Hope. Um, okay. for their community meeting, uh, but uh, certainly be happy to reach out to you to discuss any specific uh, challenges. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Are there any other questions related to this particular project before we move on to the next? Um, just on this, I just saw comment uh, about what skinny do I have in this. I'm here in my role as an attorney for the property owner. I've been practicing law for 26 years. This is how I make a living. This is how I feed my family. Right. And, and I should have said maybe not all comments uh, necessarily have to be addressed. You know, we are trying to, as the city of South Fulton, just make sure that we provide a forum for the public to know about projects that are being proposed uh, within their area. Uh, there will, with all of these cases, be additional opportunity for the applicant to hold his or her own community meeting um, to address any additional concerns as staff is preparing the uh, analysis of each and every one of these projects. So. With that said, if there aren't any additional questions, let's move on to the next case, Marissa. All right, so the next case is another request for a variance. Um, it's, at, it's at 6818 Montreux Street. And next slide, the applicant is requesting a variance to reduce the rear yard setback from 20 feet to four feet. The site is zone R3. Future land use is suburban neighborhood, and the applicant actually has a gazebo that was a gift um, in honor of her late husband who has passed away. And the gazebo is already in her backyard and it's significantly past the uh, minimum setback. As you can tell, she wants to reduce it from 20 feet to four feet. And here we are, here's Old National. And so if you make a loop, um, if you're coming from Jonesboro Road, you make a right here into the subdivision. And this is how pretty it is. 
it is future land use a suburban neighborhood too. Oh, oh it is actually zoned CUP, my apologies. And the applicant is working on a site plan, but here is what we have for the property. You can see the rear yard is very close to the property line. It's four feet from the rear yard. And the applicant, Ms. Tur Ms. Shields Turner is here with us. Let's see if we can get her unmuted. There we go. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. I do apologize the the address that you have. My address is 6818. Um, Understood. I will update that. And the um so the the not the site plan, but the uh my subdivision is off of Old National and Creole Road. I don't know if that makes a difference at all. Thank you for the update. Okay. And so again, thank you, Ms. Jackson. Um, yes, my my wish is to uh, have the variance um, granted so that my gazebo can stay in its present location. It was a gift um, from my family. I was away on, on business. When I came home, they had built it for me um, just kind of as a, a comfort gift. I lost my husband. And this was something, a project that we had talked about um, completing in our backyard because it was right about the beginning of the pandemic. So we're like, well, we need something where we can just chill at home since this is where we're going to be. Um, but sadly, he did pass away um, soon after. And so this was, was the gift that I received. So I'm hoping to receive the variance so that um, the gazebo can stay in its current location. Great. Thank you, ma'am. You're at welcome. this time, are there any questions for the applicant or for staff related to this project? If so, please use the raise hand function or type your question in the chat. I don't see any, so let's proceed with the next application, Marissa. And I believe that's the last one. Great. So again, I want to reiterate, the purpose of these meetings are to simply acknowledge to the public and the city of South Fulton that the city has received applications uh, and we wanted to provide you with the first opportunity to just hear basic information related to the individual projects. At this point in our process, which is at the beginning, we have not conducted the staff analysis. Departments haven't weighed in as it relates to the potential impact on different divisions or departments within the city of South Fulton. Um, and throughout this process, as members of the public, you will have an opportunity to participate in other community meetings and other public hearings that are scheduled as the pro each of these applications makes its way all the way to the ultimate hearing body, which uh, in, in these cases would be um, hearing public hearings before the city council. But there will be several opportunities for you to provide additional comment, to engage in discussions with staff and with the applicant uh, to make sure that any issues, concerns, letters of support you can offer uh, for these particular projects. So um, with that, I see we have one raised hand. Um, I will unmute Ms. Dixon. Um, with a comment or a question. I just wanted to say thank you, um, Mr. Hall and uh, Ms. Jackson uh, for bringing this platform to us. I think it could be, could be commended. I am looking forward to the other meetings. I just want to, uh, to mention, ask if you would please get with GDOT before any more projects are approved on the Camerton Road, Camp Creek, Riverside area, Fulton Industrial area, some type of traffic plan in place before more projects are approved in this area. Wallace Road also. Thank you. So noted, Ms. Dixon. Thank you. And with that, if there aren't any other questions, 
Uh, please stay tuned to additional updates uh, that we will post on the city's website regarding additional community development regulatory affairs activities. Thank you and have a good day.